Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Amazing World of Science and I am Dr. Radha Subramaniam, your science teacher and in today's class I am going to do the first lesson from NCRT class 10 for science. So we will be starting with the first lesson chapter 1 chemical reactions and equations and this is from chemistry and uh, quite an important lesson. So you all are familiar with the term chemical reactions and uh, we have to learn about different types of chemical reactions what is an equation how do you write an equation okay so first of all let us consider some situations of daily life and what happens when you keep some milk at room temperature during summer season so all of you would have a fridge refrigerators at your home and you would have seen your mothers keeping the milk immediately in summer season as soon as it comes they keep it in the fridge okay so what happens if you leave it at room temperature during summer season then iron tawa you know uh, you make uh, doshas and all that pan or an iron nail if you leave it in the atmosphere in a humid atmosphere what happens to that now you keep grapes so after some days what happens it gets fermented you know it turns sour in taste and food is cooked or food is digested in your body and when you respire see what happens in all the above situations the nature and identity of the initial substance have somewhat changed okay so first of all you know the milk when it came you know uh, there is some character or nature for that but when you keep it in a uh, hot season outside it curdles you know it becomes sore in taste and its identity itself is changed you cannot use it anymore so already you learnt about physical and chemical changes of matter in the uh, previous chapters so what happens is that whenever a chemical change happens we say that the chemical reaction has taken place you know there are two types of changes physical changes and chemical changes you have known uh, or you might know that physical change is a temporary change what can you say for example for a physical change just take a rubber band elastic rubber band you stretch it you know it becomes long but what happens when you release it it comes back to the original condition so that is a physical change because the substances can retain their original condition but what happens uh, in a chemical change see when the milk curdles can you get the original form of the milk back no it is a permanent change so you know now what is meant by chemical and physical change and what is the difference between them so how do you come to know that a chemical reaction has taken place so uh, you you must know how a reaction take place and what happens uh, during a chemical reaction so for example what we do now is you just uh, you might have seen magnesium ribbon uh, when you burn it uh, with it burns with dazzling you know very bright white flame and just turns into a white powder okay and the powder is called magnesium oxide so what happens this magnesium ribbon it will react with oxygen in, which is present in the air and changes to white magnesium oxide powder okay you now from all these points what do you understand from the activities you can read the other activities which is given in the NCRT textbook and you see the following observations and which helps us to decide whether a chemical reaction has take, taken place so what are the three uh, four uh, observations we can do first it is change in state change in color evolution of a gas and change in temperature so these four observations will help us to find out if a chemical reaction has taken place Suppose you look at the changes around you, what can we see that there are large variety of chemical reactions taking place around us. Now we will study about the various types of chemical reactions and their symbolic representation in there. In this chapter what all reactions are there, how will you represent this. First of all we will discuss what is meant by chemical equation. Okay, First you saw that when you burn a magnesium ribbon in oxygen it gets converted or changes to magnesium oxide. How will you describe it? See, uh, normally if you say this in sentence, it's very long, isn't it? Every time you cannot say, oh, I burned magnesium in air and it reacted with oxygen. Then I got magnesium oxide. Long sentences you, can, you cannot use. 
so you write it in short form and the simplest way to do this it is in writing the in the form of a word equation so the simplest word equation for this reaction is magnesium plus oxygen giving magnesium oxide so here you can see the substances which undergoes chemical change what are they magnesium and oxygen and you put an arrow and on the right side of the arrow you write the product which is, which is magnesium oxide so left side of the arrow you write the reactants and you how many whatever number of reactants are there you connect each reactant with a plus sign and write the product on the right hand side of the arrow okay so the substances that undergo chemical change in the reaction as i said already these are magnesium and oxygen they are the reactants new substance form magnesium oxide is the product and uh, this is the word equation it shows the change of reactants to products on the left hand side lhs with a plus sign and a right hand side you write the product okay and the arrow shows the direction in which the reaction is taking place okay now shall we uh, move on to the next topic how do you write a chemical equation okay first of all uh, we represented uh, this in the uh, reaction by using words okay and here what have you got to do is there are uh, short ways to represent chemical equation okay chemical equations can be made more concise and useful if we use chemical formula instead of words instead of writing magnesium in spelling you can just use symbol so chemical equation represents a chemical reaction so all my already you have learned the formulas of elements magnesium oxygen and all that what is a magnesium mg plus oxygen is o2 the word equation we learned previously you can write it in the form of symbol symbols which is very simple mgo is magnesium oxide so mg plus oxygen reacts to give mgo so you can compare the number of uh, atoms of each element on the left hand side and right hand side of the arrow see here magnesium how many magnesium only one here also one the oxygen right hand side we have got only one but on the left hand side there are two oxygen atom so now we say that see always uh, according to the law of conservation of matter no matter uh, energy is neither created nor destroyed it, the mass should be same on either sides of the equation so here this equation we say it is unbalanced because number of oxygen on the left side is more than the right side so such a chemical equation that is we call it a skeletal chemical equation for a reaction uh, we call it unbalanced equation okay now what can you do here you can balance chemical equation okay what is the need of balancing the chemical equation uh, that is you have learned law of conservation of mass in class 9 already i told you matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction okay that is the number of atoms of each elements remains the same before and after a chemical reaction so you have to balance the number of atoms uh, if there is any change okay now we can write a word equation for the reaction zinc plus sulfuric acid gives zinc sulfate plus hydrogen you write it in word form now you can write the same word equation in the form of chemical equation that is zn plus h2so4 giving zn hso4 plus h2 now you'll check the number of atoms of each element okay different elements on either sides of the arrow now see element with how many elements are there zinc is there hydrogen is there sulfur is there and oxygen is there so reactant side you can write lhs and product side you can write rhs so reactant side how many zinc only one hydrogen two atoms are there sulfur only one oxygen four atoms are there similarly right hand side zinc is one sulfur one uh, sulfur uh, also uh, see second is hydrogen hydrogen is two then third is sulfur sulfur is one then oxygen is four now you can see that the number of atoms of each element is same on both sides of the arrow should be a chemical equation see here is that one in both cases left side right side hydrogen also same sulfur also same then oxygen is also same so in this case uh, if the number of elements on left hand side and right hand side of the equation are same we call it a balanced equation now 
many cases the equations are not balanced so in those cases we have to balance the chemical equation which i will discuss in the next session of uh, uh, 10th standard we'll be continuing uh, each lesson so uh, with this today we'll wind up and uh, in the next class i'll be continuing with how to balance a chemical equation see uh, learning ncrt directly all the concepts and everything is extremely important because a good foundation for class 10 will help you immensely in your board exam because many of the questions you have to think and understand the concept before writing the answers for your board exam so uh, on for the sake of the board exam this is very useful you have to learn the textbook of ncert science which is why we are uh, you know uh, giving importance to learning of ncert books all the concepts and uh, every lesson line by line i will be teaching you and uh, i hope uh, you all come forward to subscribe uh, to the channel amazing world of science by dr radha subramanya and just share the link of the channel with your friends and like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon because as soon as i post new videos you will be getting the notifications immediately so with that we'll wind up for today and thanks for watching the video